Hello, from this video you will learn how it was possible to add infinite funds to your Steam account by exploiting a flow in the integration with the payment service. The vulnerability was reported on HackerOne by the Airbricks, who got $7.5,000 for it. The link to the original report is in the description. I also created hands-on labs where you can reproduce the vulnerability. Watch the video until the end to see how you can access them. I will also have a gift for you, but for now, enjoy the video. For those of you who don't know, Steam is a place where you buy games. The hunter wanted to find a bug in the functionality of adding funds. Let's see how the flow looked normally. First, in Steam, you choose the amount you want to add, fill in your address, choose the payment method and information like this. The process consists of multiple requests, but for us, the last two ones are the most important. Post to init transaction with all this data as parameters. In response to that, there is a JSON which contains transaction ID. What probably happens on the backend, Steam adds this transaction to the database with the transaction ID, amount of funds to add, the user and other data about it. Next, there's a GET request to external link endpoint with transaction ID as the parameter. In the HTML of the response, there's a form that will be sent to smart to pay server. I chose Przelewy24 as my payment provider, but that's a local Polish company. For a global firm like Steam, it could be hard to integrate with different providers for different countries. That's why they use smart to pay It's a bridge between Steam and payment methods in the whole world. Steam integrates with one smart to pay API, which on the other side integrates with over 200 payment methods for different countries. So Steam must somehow redirect me to smart to pay with proper parameters. Namely, there must be an amount which I am supposed to pay and the transaction ID. But I'm a hacker. You can't just tell me to not modify those parameters. What you can do, however, is sign them with a secret I don't know using a hash. Hash is a one-way function that takes some input and generates a hash which looks like this. For SHA-256, it has 64 characters when written in hex format. It was generated based on the parameters I created in Steam and a secret value that I don't know. By seeing the hash, I can't guess the values used to generate it. And if I only change one character in any of those parameters, the hash would look completely different. How does this help? The secret is shared between Steam and smart to pay when I send the POST request to smart to pay it also creates a hash based on my values and the secret. It then compares the hash that I send with what smart to pay thinks it should be. If I would change the amount or any other parameter, the hash would no longer be valid and the transaction would be rejected. If it's valid, smart to pay communicates with the chosen payment provider and the transaction is finalized. In case of this bug, we don't really care about integrations between smart to pay and payment providers, but rather between Steam and smart to pay. And after the transaction is completed, no data is sent to Steam on the client side. What happens on the backend is that smart to pay sends an information to Steam that the transaction with specific ID was completed. It can be done, for example, using a webhook. Then Steam looks into its database for this transaction, adds funds to the proper user and marks the transaction as complete. So where's the bug? Let's take a closer look at how exactly do these systems create a string from parameters when calculating a signature. Turns out that they were using the parameters one next to another without any separators. So for my body, the string would look like this. 
SHA-256 hash is calculated using this value and a secret at the end. So this is the request that's sent to Smart2Pay API. Then Smart2Pay takes the whole request body and splits it, first by ampersands and then by equal signs. And those characters are not in the string used for calculation. Considering this, all these requests would be equivalent. What can you do with that? You can arbitrarily put ampersands and equal signs in the body. However, you still can't add or modify any values. But if your email happened to contain a parameter name and value, you could overwrite the existing parameters that were used when generating a signature. So you can create a Steam account with email greg amount 100 greg at example.com. Then you can create a new transaction in Steam for as high value as you can. In Poland, it's 400 PLN, so the amount parameter will be 40,000. Then Steam creates a new transaction in the database with amount 40,000 and generates a valid signature for your parameters. Next, before sending the request to smart to pay you modify the body. You move the equal sign from the original amount parameter. Instead of amount equals 40,000, you want to have amount 4 equals 0000, because amount 4 is a parameter that will never be used by smart to pay API. Then you add ampersands and equal signs inside your email to add the new amount parameter with the value 100. You didn't modify anything besides ampersands and equal signs, so the signature is still valid. But smart to pay sees the amount parameter with value 100, so you proceed to pay 1 PLN. After the transaction is complete, smart to pay sends a webhook to Steam that the transaction with ID from step 3 is complete. Then Steam takes a look into the database, finds a transaction with this ID and sees that it has an amount of 400 PLN. So it adds 400 PLN to your account when you only paid 1 PLN. The vulnerability was classified as critical and Hunter was awarded $7.5,000. Thank you for watching the video until the end. You can access hands-on labs if you are a subscriber of BBRE Premium. Apart from that, you will also receive even better version of my newsletter with the best hacking tips and tricks, tool tutorials and many, many more. And to show how much I appreciate you for watching the whole video, here is a code for 25% off, amount 100. With that, you can get BBRE Premium for only $5 a month. You can only use the code until 9 September, but it will be valid forever, which means you will get 25% off every single recurrence of the subscription. Find more details at premium.backbountyexplained.com. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye. If they use secrets that are as complex as these examples from the documentation, then you could easily break those hashes.